Lasers are cool, and we should do anything in our power to introduce them to as many facets of our life as we can. So I'm going to show you how to do a do-it-yourself laser pointer for your telescope. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, and you're watching Star Stuff. Recently it was the International Day of Light. This was brought to my attention by another channel, Styro Pyro. He combined red, green and blue lasers to make a white beam, which I thought was really cool. And I actually had the parts laying around, so I tried it myself, although I was missing the red laser. But it's a really cool experiment, you should check his channel out. The first laser was fired in 1960, so 58 years ago. It's not that long, and lasers are everywhere now. In astronomy you're probably most familiar with them for outreach. We use laser pointers like these for showing people the night sky and being able to point at a star. And it makes it easy rather than waving your finger in the sky to show someone where a star actually is. You've probably also seen awesome photos of real professional observatories with a laser sticking out of the dome. Now that's something called adaptive optics. Adaptive optics is where the mirror makes really fast corrections and it bases those corrections off a laser pointing out to a distant object to see how that object is being distorted. And by correcting for that distortion, they get a much clearer image than they would. It's basically like cutting through the atmosphere without having to launch a telescope into space. But what I'm going to show you today is how to make a laser finder. Now this is to replace a traditional finder scope. Uh, you might be familiar with the smaller red dot finders that you find on mini telescopes. And also the finder scope in general, which is sometimes awkward to crane and arch your neck to look through the finder scope and try and find a, a distant light source. So a laser finder is another idea where you stick a laser on the telescope that's running directly in parallel with the scope optics itself so you're pointing straight at what you're trying to find and this means that you can use the hand controller or whatever you're using to control the telescope and find that thing in the sky without having to look through an eyepiece or without having to look through a finder scope. You just look at the laser and point it to where you're going and then it's going to be roughly in the eyepiece or roughly in the field of view on your screen anyway. So I just looked around and found a bunch of parts that I thought I would use. Bits of pipe and some cable ties and some screws. Now the screws on the telescope that you need are the ones that would, you would normally use to mount a finder scope or something like that. Uh, what I did is just took the screw in and basically just eyeballed it. Eventually found that the ones that fit the telescope were M4 15mm ones. Now you've got to make sure they have the really small uh, thread on them, the fine thread. Don't don't try and force in like a concrete or a timber screw into uh, into your lovely telescope. But the ones that have this fine thread on them work great. And then you don't have to pay as much money for an official part. I quickly discovered that I didn't need most of that stuff. The solution ended up being just the small piece of pipe. The 25mm piece of pipe was the perfect size for the SD Laser 303. Now you can get these off eBay or anywhere online really. They're illegal to import into Australia so you want to be careful. They are legal to have though if you're an astronomer and registered with a local astronomy society. Then I just drilled a hole through the 25mm piece of pipe through both sides and I was able to run a screw down the middle of that. The screw had a little bump on the top, the, the head of the screw, and that allowed me to really wedge the laser in there with no give whatsoever. So I pushed that through, then I was able to position the laser with the pipe around it and the screw at the bottom into the hole and just turn it around until it was tight enough and facing upwards. From there on all I had to do was wedge in a little piece of cardboard up and down and I aimed on the moon and it's working great. I really like the way it looks, it's total extravagance, I don't need something like this really. But for that first star or first two stars in your alignment routine, not the polar alignment routine but the normal star alignment routine, it can be really handy and it means that I don't have to attach a finder scope to the rasa. And you'll find by the time you get up to the third, fourth, fifth star in your alignment routine, they're pretty close to the, the center of the eyepiece anyway. It's just for those initial few stars it, it can be really helpful. And really it just looks amazing. It looks like my observatory is suddenly like a spaceship that's about to take off and attack something. So I think it's really cool. And I just wanted to share this quick video because I haven't posted in a little while. Uh, and I hope to have some new videos for you shortly. I should also mention that apart from the laser itself, this mount thing that I built for the laser finder was probably only about 
three dollars in parts and two dollars fifty was for the screws themselves and only use one of them the pipe itself was about 40 cents so yeah about three bucks that's all from me bye